Hey folks, today I just wanted to talk really quickly about this. Uh, this is the Time More Slim coffee grinder. Um, I picked it up a couple weeks ago, but when I was looking for it, I couldn't find as much information uh, as I would have liked. Um, but I thought I'd bite the bullet, give it a shot, and then maybe make a quick video about it uh, to share some information with you. It cost 160 Canadian, which places it you know, um, above something like a Porlex or, or like a Hario Skirton. Um, but definitely below like a C40 um, or anything from Orphan Espresso, any Lido's. And I was really looking for it to be kind of a, a mid-priced uh, solid performer for the money. So first of all, you got your standard three pieces. Got a handle piece with a little knob on the end. You have your uh, hopper, bean chamber, burr chamber thing. And with a quick twist off in the bottom, you have your grinds collection chamber doodad. Um, Really simple build, nothing new here, but it does feel really nice. There's some really good heft to this thing. Uh, it feels like it's quality, uh, and again, this this model at least, uh, and the, the more expensive ones of course, uh, are almost entirely metal, with the exception of this little knob at the end of your um, lever handle thing. Now the burrs, uh, this is a, a version with steel burrs. You can also opt for one with titanium burrs, which is a little more uh, espresso oriented, um, but I picked this up with the intention of using it as, as my, kind of my daily grinder for pour over and aeropress. The capacity of the hopper is about 20 grams, they say. Uh, I have found, depending on your bean, you can get between 18, 22, maybe 23 in here. Um, and that will kind of just barely fit in the grinds chamber usually. Uh, for me, that's about perfect because I'm usually only brewing coffee for one, um, but you know, your mileage may vary. Adjusting your grind, very simple with this guy. On the bottom, you've got your uh, grind adjustment kind of wheel. If you just hold on to the handle and then click it around, you can coarsen or fine your grind uh, appropriately. Now it is a stepped grinder, it's definitely not a, a stepless adjustment, so if that's a deal breaker for you, maybe look elsewhere. The actual grinding experience for me has been uh, honestly kind of fun. It cuts very fast and it, it seems to cut really consistently. I can show you some, some photos of comparing different grind sizes, um, but from what I can see it's performed really, really well so far. Um, definitely a lot faster than some of the cheaper grinders that I've used. Now, I don't know how this would work uh, as an espresso grinder, at least with the, the stainless steel burrs that I have in here. I did try and do a quick test at kind of all the way at the finest option, and I, uh, I found honestly that it didn't, A, it took a very long time, um, but B, it just felt like it didn't, the burrs did not do a, a great job of, of catching the beans in the hopper and kind of pushing them through. So it almost felt like a lot of the time that I was spinning this handle, it just it just wasn't grinding anything, you know. And, and in fairness, I, I was at the the finest setting, uh, and it was not as bad a couple settings up. But I really don't know. I haven't tried it with espresso, so I'm not sure just how fine you need to go to kind of get appreciable performance out of a machine. So disclaimer, I don't know how it would work for that. But for pour over, I think the grind is very fast, very consistent. Cleaning this guy, uh, you can take kind of the whole burr assembly out if you just uh, twist this to course all the way until the end pops off. Um, the whole thing will drop out and you can really get in there with kind of, say, the included brush that they give you, uh, which also, incidentally, feels pretty nice. Yeah, so the whole burr assembly will drop out and you can really kind of dust it all off. Um, not hard to get to at all. So, I mean, that's kind of it. it it's a pretty simple hand grinder. So, overall, um, things that I like, I think it looks really good. I think aesthetically it's very pleasing. Um, and again, just the, the heft and the feel of it, uh, the fit and finish feels really high quality um, for the price that you're paying. I think it grinds really consistently, really fast. Um, again, I do pour over, I do immersion. Uh, I don't really do espresso at home, so I cannot speak to the effectiveness in that capacity. Uh, but for what I do, it's great. Uh, it's easy to clean, you know, it, it's, it's not hard at all to drop the whole burst head out and really clean kind of everything that's in there um, or replace the burrs if you need to, but definitely a bonus. If you like to travel with all of your coffee accoutrement, uh, you can fit about uh, three quarters of this guy in the top of your AeroPress. Um, maybe that makes it a little bit more travel friendly. It doesn't take care of the handle uh, at all, but uh, if that's a bonus for you, there you go. Uh, and I have found it to be pretty low retention for what it's worth. Um, I usually drop maybe 0 0.1, 0 0.05 of a gram between uh, what I put in and what I dose out. Things that I maybe don't love as much, uh, mostly nitpicks. Uh, the grip, uh, it definitely gives you enough grip. It's definitely functional. Uh, it gives you enough to hold on to while you are grinding. Um, it is just a little bit rough on the hands sometimes, and maybe that's just me being spoiled. But 
Um, if you are grinding coffee for more than yourself, for two, three, four friends, uh, it does get a little bit um, rough on, on the hands. This guy, I personally have not had a problem with the, the knob popping off mid-grinding. Um, I know some people have, have mentioned it on the internet. Uh, it's not been a problem for me. I find this thing um, pretty well attached. Uh, but I did notice that under here, the, the finish has kind of worn a little bit where this uh, attaches. Um, not a usability issue, but it does kind of imply that you know this coating is, is not going to be bulletproof. You know, and that's that's fair. Um, what else? Like a lot of grinders, it is it does often produce a fair amount of static. Um, and if you don't remember to kind of put a couple of water drops in the top of your grinder, you can find this. You can find the innards kind of all covered with your grinds, and it's just a bit annoying to to get in there and, and brush it all off. But again, not that big a deal. Um, slightly more annoying from my uh, point of view uh, is that as far as I can tell it is impossible not to get some amount of grinds in the, the threading uh, where these two pieces attach um, and I just, that ju it just annoys me, that's all. But again, it, it's just how it's designed um, and it, it, it's not, it's probably not a big deal. Uh, I guess the, the biggest single kind of drawback that I could see uh, is at least, at least with this burr set, uh, the performance of this grinder at kind of the really fine end of the spectrum uh, just was not great from when I when I tested it out. Uh, like as it stands, I would not use this as, as an espresso grinder. Uh, but maybe with the alternative burr set, it's better. I don't know. Uh, I can't really speak to it. So overall, um, for the money, yeah, I think I, I'm really happy with this performance. It's it's definitely a step up from um, the, your Porlex or, or your Harios, your Skirtons. It's almost certainly not as good as something like a Hilo or a C40 um, or a Pharos. But I, I also I don't have the budget for those. So. As someone looking for kind of a, a medium budget, medium high performing grinder, um, I'm very happy with this and I'm happy to make this kind of my daily go-to. Uh, hopefully that was helpful. Thank you for hanging out. Uh, I appreciate it. Um, let me know if I can answer anything else for you uh, in the comments and I'll, I'll do my best to do so. Um, stay safe. Stay happy. See you another time. Bye-bye.